Welcome back, folks, to the Membership Machine Show. This is episode 61. In this show, we're going to be talking about what are some of the best solutions on WordPress. If you've got a membership website and you're looking to build a multi-vendor marketplace, very similar to some of the course marketplaces. You, example, Unimi. If you want to have multiple instructors selling their own courses or other digital products or physical products on your website, what are some of the best solutions? The good news is there's a lot of solutions on WordPress out there. I've got my colleague Haroon with me who knows everything about this, has built a number of these type of websites, and I'm sure we've got some great information and insights that will help you build this out. So Haroon, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? Sure thing. Thank you, Jonathan. And hi, everyone. Uh, this is Haroon, and uh, I've been uh, working in the tech industry for the past... Um, okay, now it's 2024, so it's like almost two and a half decades. Yeah, in 2025, it's going to be 25 years of working in tech. And uh, Yeah, he started with... building websites when he was the age of five, listeners and viewers. <laughs> Well, I'm about to turn 40 this March. So yeah, oh, not quite yeah. five, but I was 15 actually uh, when I started writing my first HTML. And I remember back in the day, I built the site with tables because I didn't know what CSS was. So HTML with, with HTML tables to lay everything out, it was a, it was a mess. But hey, coming back. Um, so we've well, been, been working with WordPress since around 2007 or 2008 when I did my college's website. Uh, I convinced them to let me try my hands on, on taking over all of their tech. And that was fun. So over this journey, I've worked with pretty much every major uh, tool for most things you do with WordPress, including uh, building multi-vendor marketplaces. And uh, uh, oh, that has helped me determine uh, what's the right fit for the particular client's requirements, not just when it comes to uh, marketplaces or e-commerce or multi-vendor stores, but WordPress in general, uh, like uh, be it uh, things like building social networking sites with Buddy Boss or Peepso and whatnot. And same goes with e-learning, same goes with uh, events, you name it. So yeah, that's a bit of an intro there. Yeah, that's great. Before we go into the meat and potatoes of this great show, I've got a couple of messages from our major sponsors. We will be back in a few seconds, folks. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to LifterLMS.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. Coming back, folks. We're going to be talking about all about marketplaces, but before we do I uh, also want to point out that we've got some great special offers from our major sponsors. Plus, we are we have a monthly sponsor. We've got Cloudways as our monthly sponsor. So if you're looking to host your website, your general website, because obviously if you've got a buddy boss learning management, you should host with WP Tony. But if you're looking at Cloudways, they are a great provider and we appreciate them sponsoring in the month of January. Plus, if you're looking for all the deals from the sponsors, plus a created list of all the best WordPress plugins and services, you can find all those goodies by going over to wp-tonic.com slash deals. wp-tonic.com slash deals. What more could you ask for, listeners and viewers? Probably a lot more, but that's all you're going to get from that page. Well, there we on go. The, go on. on the subject of uh, Cloudways, I'd like to add something for... Please don't, because, because I took their money, but I don't want to actually push them too hard. So can we move on? 
<laughs> I just wanted to add just a little bit oh, cool, uh, that I'm pretty proud of what uh, the team behind CloudOS has built because they're my fellow countrymen. Uh, they are uh, from Pakistan as well, like me, and uh, they've built a pretty pretty good solution in CloudOS. Yeah, love them. All right, so off we go. So before we go into some of the individual solutions, um, what do you think are some of the key things that people got to understand if they're considering um, building a course marketplace where um, where they are offering not only their own courses but also other instructors, other um individuals that have knowledge in a particular subject i think i think obviously you've got to grow your initial i think it is a great idea but i think a lot of people look at doing that from day one and they would be it's just too much too early and i think they need to build their own tribe their own audience a little bit and get some traction before they start inviting other people to attempt to sell their knowledge on their platform. What's your thoughts about what I've just outlined, Heron? Completely agreed. And this is not just when it comes to uh, multi-vendor marketplaces or multi-instructor course sites. This applies to anything you want to build. You First and foremost, you have to build and validate a business case for it. You have to see whether it makes business sense for you to do it or not, just not because the idea appeals to you. And for it to make business sense, as Jonathan just pointed out, um, it's, it's imperative that you see whether you have that sort of a niche, a sort of an audience, a sort of uh, a target market that will purchase not just from you but from those basically when you're bringing on other instructors you as a platform are endorsing them in one way or the other so if you don't have a voice of your own in the first place if they don't trust you in the first place why on earth would they want to trust your endorsements so yeah it's extremely important and also people uh like clients often come to us jonathan has experienced that as well i've experienced it as well everyone on the agency side or on the freelance side has experienced this clients come to us extremely enthusiastic about an idea and that's a great thing but yeah. they just think that giving that idea to an agency to a developer and getting that solution built will start minting, minting money for them but that's not the case we can build you the best solution and it's just going to sit there and do nothing if the audience isn't going to come to it because you haven't built a right business case, you haven't built a right go-to-market strategy, you haven't built the right marketing campaigns for it and everything. It's just going to be there sitting there doing nothing, not making you money, in fact, costing you. So that's something to consider whenever you start any business and especially when you start digital businesses because non-tech uh, people, they tend to uh, often uh, neglect this side uh, of uh, the business. They think that tech is going to solve every problem that they have. No, tech is only going to present you an avenue to build a business. You have to build the business yourself. Yeah, I think there's great opportunities, but um, a lot of people get carried away. You, you just, it's, it's a ladder and you're climbing up, folks, and you've got to have a plan and unless you have already built a really large audience or you've got um, the money to um, hire uh, the best people to advise you and then use maybe paid um, paid traffic to help you with that, it's going to be uh, a little bit of a hard road. But on the other hand, I don't want to... Um, discourage people from the whole idea because in the right setup it's quite powerful are you still there Harun? yeah i'm still here my camera just uh, restarted on me so i'm uh, all right he's uh, yeah. oh he's back again there we are I, I i was worried that i had upset him listeners and viewers and he had disappeared i've had that a few times so um i'll, I'll just need a second to make sure that uh, the battery 
isn't giving an issue so i'll i'll be oh he's, right che he's checking he's, he's checking his batteries now listeners and viewers there we go um i did a i have another podcast folks and i did a great interview with a great influencer and trainer that has a great membership website themselves and it's training web designers and developers in the most modern ways of building um, wordpress websites Very good. Um, Kevin Kerry, I had the interview with, and he pointed out the amount of things that go into a effective website, um, UX design, copy, um, basic design, SEO, um, marketing automation. There is an enormous amount of balls so that somebody who's starting an online business has to juggle so trying to do everything straight away unless you've got a large team or you can hire a large group of professionals or agency is going to be difficult so it's better to do it in stages folks um, if you haven't got those resources because you, by not doing that you're diminishing actually your chance of success which would be a shame if you have got a good idea and a good niche um before we go into pacific solutions haru i think the other thing is um i think the resources necessary um i think if I think you have built some um, solutions where you're combining not only e-learning, i.e. with a learning management system, but you've got a buddy boss website, a community website, and then you've also integrated it with a marketplace. So I would imagine, based on my experience, that is the most demanding, because we have also built some of these solutions and people are not aware of the actual um, building them with the right tools is really quite important. Um, but also having the hosting resources, they tend to totally underestimate what will be the requirements as soon as they get some users of the website. Have you got similar experience, Heron? Agreed, agreed, completely agreed. In fact, few businesses for which I did build some very advanced solutions involving so many tools. They were very enthusiastic about, uh, uh, about launching. But one thing, one issue that I saw them do, they were waiting for everything to be built and perfect before launch. I kept yeah. on telling them to just launch with phase one. At, at the end of phase one, we had, let's say, uh, a basic e-learning system and basic community features built. So launch with that. Then add advanced features like events, third party uh, brands and uh, um, experts onboarding, and then launch with that. And then after that, do the whole multi vendor marketplace where you want to engage that community to sell on your platform. But they wanted to do everything together and they ended up doing nothing because by the time everything was built, it was like they were burnt out and uh, they, they just didn't have that level of traction. And then they just couldn't take the business along, uh, which would have been completely opposite had they spent the couple of years that we, we spent building and refining and, and taking the platform to that level. If those couple of years had been spent getting actual user feedback and then iterating based on that feedback, we would have, uh, rather they would have, I consider myself to be like a partner of my clients, so I say we. So we, we would have built a, a pretty good business. They had a good business case. So yeah, that's something Just, that you don't want so to do. So that's a real shame, isn't it? Because yeah, yeah. Uh, you feel feel for them a bit. Yeah, it made me uh, sad because uh, I was so so mentally invested in having built such a great solution for them that I really wanted to see it succeed. And it was, it was heart-wrenching uh, to see it shut down simply because uh, of, a, of a wrong execution plan. Yeah. So we might be coming across as being a bit doom-laden at the start of this um, podcasts or video, but we're not trying to be because we um, we're just pointing out to you folks that um, it's probably not the best idea if you're starting out with your membership um, course um, journey. 
But on the other hand, if you have got some traction or you already got audience and you've got a little bit of experience in the membership area, looking at a multi-vendor, bringing in other instructors um, could be a great way of not only promoting your own website, but also getting traction for these other people that you're bringing in. So it's one of those scenarios where it's a win-win for everybody, for yourself, for the partners you're bringing in, and also for your student base, because you're bringing in new knowledge, new energy, um, which can make a big difference to the whole experience of your students, your own tribe in a way. It's just doing it at the right time. And I agree with Haroon. Um, I call it building out the most minimum viable course. It comes from the startup community with a minimum viable product. Um, I've copied this from a great podcast that I listen to regularly from Rob Rowling, one of the joint founders of Drip, one of the leading email marketing platforms there. A very knowledgeable individual. So i just taken that concept from what I learned from Rob. And I think you should really apply it to every step on your journey. But do not be discouraged because doing this at the right moment with the right partners like WP Tonic and we work with Haroon on a regular basis, having the right team will guarantee you success. The other factor, Haroon, is I think WordPress is a fabulous solution in this particular scenario because I think um, not building on all these scenarios from membership from community to marketplace building a solution not on somebody's leased land having the freehold and building something which you have the maximum ownership and control in all scenarios the best but when it comes to the investment where you've got a business that has multi um, vendors building it on a platform that you have the most control over is of supreme important importance what do you reckon Harun? i completely agree with that i'm doing well here folks he's agreeing with everything i'm saying <laughs> he doesn't normally do that but, well, oh, sorry Aaron. <laughs> go on keep going yeah so uh yeah because wordpress gives you uh like WordPress is very different from uh, pretty much everything else on the market in that you either get closed systems on, on one side of the spectrum uh, in which you just get the GUI and uh, you, you pay them and they host everything and then you have very limited customization. You have limited on-platform integrations and when it comes to integration with other similar SaaS tools, I'm talking about SaaS. So one end of the spectrum is SaaS. So What's wrong with my camera today? It's I just, don't. It doesn't like. It, it doesn't like the look, Haroon. You know. It doesn't, yeah. It doesn't like the Jamaican look, Haroon. He's having oh, ten. Sorry, if you're, he's going off, folks. Yeah. Um. I can hear him in the background. So if you're yeah, on the podcast, I'm, I'm here, but the camera keeps on rebooting on me for some reason, and then I have to restart OBS. Yes. There we go. Ubit. It's a fantastic platform, to, but it can be extremely flaky when it gets upset. <laughs> Yeah, this is the first time it's happening. So OBS isn't giving me any issues. It's the camera that's uh, rebooting after every few minutes. And this is the first time it's happening. Oh, oh I dropped my phone. Right. Um, but I, I'll continue until he sorted out his problems, folks. Yeah. Uh, um, like Just I say, second. don't be discouraged, though, because like, but WordPress, you do get this great benefit of di digital sovereignty that you own the platform as much as possible. And that is really important if you are invested the energy, resources, and time that will be necessary to build this. But the great other thing is, folks, this is something you can do as a part-time um, hustle. You know, you can still be in full-time employment and do this and build it up. It's totally practical. And it's one of the few legitimate ways that you can build something of real 
value that really contributes income to you and your family and enables you, if you wish, to do full time and have a really great business and the freedom that it provides. And doing it in the right way is totally achievable. How you doing, Haroon? Right. Is he there or not? All right. Um, Rate your technology, folks. It's a pain. Yeah. Oh, he's back again. All right. Yeah. So Sorry let's move. Yeah, let's hope it still likes you. Let's move on to yeah. the list of solutions. Um, well, uh, I'd like to complete what I was. Oh, go on. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, yeah, yeah. Go, I'll, I'm going to be generous and let you do that, Haroon. Go Thank on. You. Thank you. So on one side of the spectrum, we've got SaaS platforms, which are walled gardens for most part, and they have very limited customizations and integrating them together under one domain, like all of your, uh, your, your, your multi-vendor marketplace, your e-commerce, uh, your uh, communities, all of them under one domain, your event registration system, uh, that's, that's like a, a huge pain. It's, it's usually can't be done even. And uh, then on the other end of the spectrum is getting a custom coded solution built from scratch and that can be super expensive and unless you have like a cto and a good in-house team to to maintain it it's uh, for a business person who's not uh, on the tech side it's it's practically uh, like prohibitively expensive and overkill to maintain so wordpress gives you a really really nice middle ground it gives you a framework, a GUI framework to build upon and to install plugins to add functionalities. And then those plugins integrate with each other so that everything stays under one domain, under one cohesive system, sharing one database while still uh, different components specializing in doing different things. And if you need some functionality that is not there in those plugins, it's open source. You can write your own custom code or you can hire a developer mm. to do like 90% of the things you do with the GUI and then 10% of those advanced features that are not available as a plug and play uh, offering by any of the plugin developers. And th you, you just get those built. And there's like a plethora of expert WordPress developers out there that you can find on many platforms and uh, it's going to be far more cost effective. And then you can choose to host it uh, on, on hosting solutions of your choice. And then that costs you based on your usage rather than you know paying a flat fee uh, to SaaS platforms, regardless of how much you're using. So uh, that's, that's like a, a, a huge advantage. For example, if you're, you, you can start off with a very basic hosting plan and then as you yeah, go- Yeah, um, oh, right, fair enough. Uh, he's getting a few enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this start with yeah. one of the um, longest running solutions, um, but there's quite a few. Um, first of all, I would be correct, all these WordPress solutions, they work with um, WooCommerce, Woo. Would I be a correct about that? Woo, yes. you've got to install Woo. Used yeah. to be called WooCommerce, then they've shortened it to Woo. Woo. Um, and that is the main building block, apart from your pay, your website builder. Um, but these all integrate with Woo. And one of the oldest that integrates with Woo and gives you this marketplace is Duckan. Duckan, I think I'm pronouncing it correct. Duckan. 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 All right. No, do, Dokan. Do, Dokan, right. Yeah. Uh, um, always pronounce you're, you're it. supposed to stretch the A, so not Kan. It's more like Kan. Can. Dokan. Back in. All right. Fair enough. We've got to get it right, haven't we? Uh, um, so uh, he's gone. He's disappeared a little bit, but his screen's still here. Hopefully. Yeah, can... I'll, I'll just I'll just remove my my camera and just use the screen for now. Right, yeah. So... It's one of the oldest. What do you see as some of its strengths and also some of its weaknesses, Haru? Um, there aren't many weaknesses when it comes to this one. Uh, it's it's like one of the best of the best, if not downright the best one out there. Uh, there's a very solid team behind it. They have like they're among the innovators of multi-vendor marketplaces in the WordPress ecosystem and 
they've just built a brilliant, brilliant product. And it's like, when you think about uh, social networking solutions for WordPress, the first thing com that comes to mind is uh, Buddy Boss. When you think of forms on WordPress, the first thing that comes to mind is generally Gravity Forms for most people, even if the, you, you use or prefer another form plugin. Uh, you think about events on WordPress, first thing that comes to mind is the events calendar. Similarly, when you think multi-vendor marketplace in WordPress, first one that comes to mind is Dukan. So they, they've built that big of a brand in this niche. And uh, brilliant solution, uh, 1.85 plus million total downloads, 700,000, sorry, 70,000 plus active marketplaces and uh, their integration, especially their integrations with payment gateways. I, I, I don't think any other option out there uh, rivals their integrations with the with, uh, payment gateways. So if you're outside the US and uh, most of the first world countries, getting a solution that works with a payment gateway in your country is extremely important. So uh, they've got that covered and they've got an excellent integration with uh, with Stripe Connect. So Stripe Connect is uh, a feature of Stripe which lets you pay vendors automatically from your platform. So it connects your Stripe account as the, as the main account of the business with third-party Stripe accounts to disperse payments. So payment disbursement takes place automatically at Stripe's level, which is great. And there are like lots and lots of features. Uh, you name it, if it's a feature of multi-vendor marketplaces, it's, there's a chance that Dukan either already has it or some third-party uh, extension provider or, or developer has provided a code snippet for it to implement it. Well, what are some of the key features, one or two features that you like the most about it? Um, the UX overall of uh, building the store itself, the backend, the backend, it's it's pretty good. It's It feels very intuitive. And just the sheer uh, flexibility it gives you to do pretty much everything, integrate with pretty much anything out there and integrates very well with the WooCommerce itself. And the uh, admin and sorry, the vendor and customer dashboards that it provides uh, the, especially the vendor dashboard that it provides, that's very powerful. It lets your vendors do a lot of, you know, uh, like uh, provides them with a lot of flexibility to handle and optimize and customize their store to the uh, within the limits that you've uh, permitted in the system. Of the, of the two learning management systems that WP Tonic works mostly with, which is either Lifter LMS or Learn Dash. Which of those two does it work best with, based on your experience, or do or do you think there isn't much um, between the two? So I have personally not used Dokan uh, with the uh, with either of the learning management systems that you mentioned mm -hmm. in in the project where we implemented. Uh, a multi-instructor on uh, LearnDash. We didn't use a multi-vendor marketplace for that particular purpose because it would have been like overkill for it. So okay. we used we used another plugin that added multi-instructor support to uh, LearnDash itself. And uh, that also ended up acting like a multi-vendor marketplace only for courses, but it was limited in scope because it was more specialized in scope. So hmm. like with Dukan and Come to think of it, you can completely do it. There's nothing preventing you from doing it because then you'd use WooCommerce as the as the method of selling the courses. You wouldn't use uh, LearnDash or Lifted LMS's own uh, e-commerce features. You'll use that to build courses, make courses available, and you'd use uh, WooCommerce to actually sell those courses. So other instructors can uh, create course products of their own like they would be able to create other products of their own. Uh, that's great. What's your experience about how it integrates with uh, Buddy Boss? Uh, yeah, so with Buddy Boss, they have a pretty solid integration. It lets uh, it like lets uh, uh, the social networking audience see which vendors are posting what products in the feed. It integrates pretty well with the with the notification system and the profile management of uh, uh, like the 
of the sellers, the seller dashboard, that also integrates very well with the Buddy Boss dashboard. The users, what they like the, the back end of the user dashboard, that also integrates pretty good, uh, like pretty seamlessly with the, uh, the Buddy Boss user, user back end. More like a front end dashboard rather than the back end, because back end is supposed to be WP admin. Well, you know, I think we got given because this this episode, folks, is just to give you insight of, of some of the key things you need to know and some of the main plugins that can help you achieve what you're looking to do. It's a kind fact, of one oh, it's a different. one oh one introduction. So let's go on to the next one, Haru, and that's mm -hmm. WCFM marketplace what's your experience of wcfm that's a mouthful isn't it yeah so it it used to be known as uh, woocommerce for vendors uh sorry woocommerce for multi-vendor or something and they abbreviated it to wcfm back in the day i remember it it was called something like woocommerce for multi-vendors or multi-stores or something like that and then they abbreviated it to wcfm it's also one of the top options available and i mean come to think of it when it comes to many of these solutions that we're discussing today uh it's especially for like depending on the scope that you want to work in, depending on the number of integrations that you, you want to utilize, if, if it's just WooCommerce with multi-vendor marketplace features you want, then you can't really get wrong, go wrong with the, any of them. They're all pretty decent solutions. It's about how many other platforms you want to integrate with, what payment gateways you want to use with it, what very specific niche features that 90% of people might not need, but you need for your particular use case. Uh, then that's when when you actually start comparing based on the particular feature set you require. So this is also a pretty good solution. Uh, they've also got most of the features that most multi-vendor marketplaces are going to need. Very solid install base and uh, um, not as many integrations as you get with Dukan, but still a pretty solid set of integrations as well for this one. Is there any particular feature based on any experience you looking at it that it has that Dukon hasn't got? Uh, I think it's the free seller app. So they give you, uh, I'm not sure if Dukan also has an app, a seller, a free seller dashboard app, uh, but this one, they give you a dedicated app to be able for sellers to connect with the store and to be able to manage everything from that app. Uh, uh, let me see if Dukan also has it. So that app, um, oh. you're, talk, you're talking about an OS, OS Apple app and yeah. an Android, are you? Yes, I am. So Do Dukan also gives you mobile apps, but they are, I think, more feature, more focused at like the customers end. So these apps are more focused on uh, like making an app out of your multi-vendor stores, like like making an uh, AliExpress app or making an Amazon-like app yes. uh, for end users. And what I'm talking about the uh, the uh, in, in case of the seller app, so this is like a dedicated app for your sellers so that they don't have to log into the website. They have a very streamlined interface in a dedicated app on their phone to upload and manage their products and to see their sales and all. All right, fair enough. Yeah. But you think apart from the integrations, these two, you could look at either and you won't be going too far wrong. Yeah, you you, you really can't go wrong with either of them. Right, let's go on to the next one before we go for our break. Oh, oh sorry, go on. Yeah, when it comes to performance, in my experience, Dukan has uh, been like actually based on the number of integrations, the number of uh, features you load, the number of like customizations you do. But Dukan has been very, very optimal. And uh, uh, this one, it wasn't like bad, but I mean, it, it didn't feel as optimal as uh, uh, sort of uh, streamlined as Dogan in some ways. Yep. Well, I think we go for our mid-break, actually, folks. And when we come back, we're going to go through some of the other solutions, and then we're going to have a, a conclusion section. Um, we will be back in a few seconds, folks.
Tired of hosting providers that can't handle high traffic loads? Convesio is here to help. Our platform can handle any amount of traffic all without slowing down or crashing. With immediate Slack support, performance optimization, and a team that thrives on resolving technical challenges, your e-commerce business is in safe hands. Learn more about Convesio at Convesio.com. We're coming back, folks. We've had an initial feast. Haroon's had a few technical problems, but he's overcome them. I, I think the the digital gods have not liked him today, but we have struggled for you. Um, I like to point out that if you are looking to run something like this and you're looking for a quality hosting partner that specializes in learning management, buddy boss, and marketplaces like this, you should look at WP Tonic. We have an amazing platform. Not only do we offer great hosting, but email into marketing integration, plus a, a long list of fantastic best of breed plugins that you can utilize all part of one of our hosting plans. So we offer a lot more value, plus ongoing advice and support when needed. You can find more by going over to WP Tonic. And you can also book a chat with me. We're a small team, but a dedicated team looking to be your WordPress partner. So on we go. On we go. Um, so WC Vendors. Yes. What, what do you know about these people? Oh, another really good option. So like... All the options that we're discussing today, as I said, you really can't go wrong with any of them. And uh, uh, WC Vendors is also a major name in the WooCommerce multi-vendor marketplace uh, ecosystem. And lots of integrations, lots of uh, features. I mean, if, if you even do a side-by-side -side comparison, you'd be pretty hard-pressed to... Uh, to choose one only based on the 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 common features because they're Im implemented across the board in a in a like in all of them in a in a pretty standard way you can't go wrong with it so it's all about those small things as i mentioned like which one integrates better with your crm and marketing automation platform for this, for instance uh, which one lets you customize the entire uh, seller dashboard experience more if you need that. Like, depending on your use case, you might not need that. Yeah, I think. You get the uh, idea. Yeah, I do. So, and when it comes to pricing, they're very, a lot of these um, that we're talking about I have very similar price structures as well, don't they, Harun? Yes, yes, they do. So, even right. WC Vendors also integrates with over 100 payment gateways, which is like a lot. And it also in, uh, integrates with the uh, Stripe Connect. They're also like most of them are Stripe's partners. They work with uh, uh, Stripe's team to implement uh, very advanced Stripe features. One of them being Stripe Connect. Right to you. On to the next one. This is a mouthful. R R M A W C F M for Woo Covers. That just yeah. rolls off your tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> So like, this isn't a marketplace, by the way, this is uh, uh, an add on. So like, this is an, a good example of an add on uh, where Oh, that's, you... I think you've just pointed out something that I wanted to talk about. And thanks for doing yeah. that, Haroon. Because um, there's another one at the bottom. So maybe I should have had those two together. There's another one called um, comes from a great WooCommerce plugin shop. Why? Um, Y I T H, yeah. Um, WooCommerce, it's they're based in Italy and they've got a plugin called Y I T H WooCommerce Multi Vendor, yeah. and I probably would link it with the one that we're talking about. Where some of the earlier ones we were talking about, I kind of see as kind of frameworks where I see these as been bolting on Pacific functionality onto WooCommerce. Would you agree the way I'm kind of linking these two uh, separately? Not, 
Not this one. This one is different. This one is not a direct add-on for WooCommerce to bring multi-vendor features to it. This is an add-on for WCFM. Ah, right. I was wrong about that. All right. So this, like, uh, I'm glad you included this because this gives me the opportunity to discuss how the add-on ecosystem also matters. Like, if you choose one, and uh, uh, you you may not find that they have every single feature you need, but there might be third-party add-ons built for them that offer features that the uh, native plugin doesn't have. So, for example, RMA, which is like uh, I don't exactly remember what RMA abbreviation stands for, but this is about, uh, uh, it's like refund management something. So RMA is like refunds, returns, and cancellation process. It, oh, it, it, right. Yeah. So this one adds very comprehensive features for managing refunds, returns, and cancellations, and you know, adding an e-wallet. So instead of refunding them money, giving them credit in the store that they can spend on something else. Uh, and you know, that sort of features, uh, which can come really handy because you may not want to give people uh, like a refund straight away. You may want to give them the option that, hey, we can refund you the money through the payment method that you used to pay, or we could give you store credit. And then you can use that store credit to either buy something from the same vendor on the store or from any other vendor on the store. So you could, uh, give them such options and these add-ons can go a long way in implementing these specific niche features that that may come in really handy depending on your business needs depending on your business model so this one adds this pretty these particular features for example as we just mentioned uh, uh e-wallet functionality uh refund return and cancellation processes stock availability shipping cost and other automated email reminders so it add, adds a bunch of related features regarding refunds uh returns and cancellations yeah, I think this is another great area in, in general because it's one of the factors that um, you can't understand if you're looking at the Woo, um, the WordPress WooCommerce kind of um, platform. Is you you got your main plugin, but there's going to be um, you also got to look at what are some of the key functionality you're looking for because. Um, a platform other vendors kind of bolt on more niche solutions on top of the framework and so you really got to do a bit of a dive and that's got to be one of the unique factors that you got to understand that a more established player will have more third-party niche wordpress vendors that bolt on add-on plugins and add-on functionality that you might need um so you've got to consider that um as one of the aspects because uh, as your journey as as you are building this like this particular add-on it might not be a key feature or something that you even understand about but being able to bolt a good solution on as it becomes obvious to you that this is important is a something you've got to keep in mind haven't you Heron? oh yes having built a multi-vendor store on a platform that does not offer such a feature and then later finding out that oh i needed this feature as well and then finding out that oh the platform i used doesn't even have a third-party plugin that offers this particular feature is this going to be a nightmare so this is one of like a project like this needs to be very well thought out from the start. You need to pick the right solution from the start. And I can't recommend any of these as the right solutions unless I have the list of your exact specific requirements, because based on that, anyone, any professional can then who has been there, who has used all of them can then recommend, okay, for your use case scenario, you go with Dukan. For your use case scenario, you go with WCFM because I know WCFM has this amazing RMA plugin out there that will fit all of your RMA needs. And now I think that's one of the key reasons why if you're starting down this road, even uh, I would like to say um, you can start it at the beginning um, but be aware that you're taking on a substantial extra um, layer or, um, that will have to be supported with energy and resources, or you've already built your course. It's best to do this in, in steps because you won't be aware of what requirements you need 
Um, so it's best to get that course up and running and then um, get feedback um, and look at the solutions and then hire a hire WP Tonic or Haroon to help you and advise you on what is the best platform. So let's move on to Multivendor X. Um, this yes. seemed to have uh, my impression, and I might be totally wrong, it had one of the more modern UX looks to yes. it. Yes. Yes, um, and it looked, it looked interesting. It looked interesting, but I'll be yeah. interested what your views are on it. So this is uh, probably the only, actually, the only one on the list that I haven't actually deployed. Uh, I've, I've worked with all of the other ones. This one in particular, I haven't worked with. But I mean, in terms of uh, the features and all, in terms of setting them up, in terms of working with them. You, you've worked with one, you've worked with all of them because they all operate in a similar manner. But in terms of the design aspect, in terms of the user experience aspect, I am very intrigued by them and they integrate pretty well with Elementor as well. I mean, I think they have the most uh, robust Elementor integration among all of the ones that we've discussed. So if you're building everything in Elementor, from what I've seen, not from what I've used, so again, disclaimer, I haven't used this one, from, but from what I've seen, user experience is the best in this one. And Jonathan pointed it out before me, otherwise I would have pointed it out uh, as the first thing upon uh, discussing this one. They're all about the UX. Yeah, well, that's great. Because um, you know, having a decent looking environment for your users, students, and um, multi-vendor, um, um, instructors that are um, coming into business with you is important. Um, yes. So I was slightly wrong about RMA, but it was a good point. Um, the last yeah. one, um, uh, which I kind of outlined, which is how do you always oh, this Italian one, number six? Yeah. I Will? just call it Yit. Yif. 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 Yif or Yit. Yeah. I got a little tip here. You want to be truly successful as a plugin, but they are hugely uh, successful, oh, yeah. so they don't have to they listen are. to me. Um, yeah. Is to have something that's pronounceable, but uh, maybe in, <laughs> in, yeah. in Italian it is. Um, if WooCommerce yeah. multi vendor, there's a few of these, and what um, and, until you put me right about the um, the way I was going to lump this with another one that we'd just spoken about. There's a number, um, most of what we've discussed are, are frameworks where this, this has more focused about working with yeah. WooCommerce, in a, but it doesn't offer the, the host of elements that the other yeah. plug-in frameworks that we've talked about. You would have yes. probably have to combine, combine this with maybe two to three other Woo, yes. Woo add-ons. You seem to be agreeing with the basic outline. Yes. And that's the philosophy behind pretty much everything Yeet builds. They are, I think, uh, in terms of the sheer number of add-ons for WooCommerce, I think they're, they're number one in the market. They, they even claim it on their site, but I'm not just taking their claim at face value. The number of add-ons for WooCommerce to do one thing or the other, especially very niche things that uh, at first glance, you might not even think of, but while running your store, you might decide, oh, this is what I need. Yeet generally has a plugin for that. Admittedly, it's their plugins aren't generally the best of the best at doing what they do, but I mean, they're there. They're among the first ones there. So Yeet is generally the first place you'd go and look for a WooCommerce add-on that you can't find elsewhere, and they're going to have it. And uh, if you are using several other of their add-ons, all of their add-ons work brilliantly well together. Each one of them isn't going to bring you a host of features, as Jonathan pointed out, but combining a few of Yeet's add-ons might just get the job done for you exactly the way you need. So yeah, Yeet is a whole ecosystem of add-ons built around WooCommerce. Yeah. And that's why this one doesn't try to do everything. It just gives you very basic functionality to uh, let other sellers sell on your store and let people buy 
from any of the sellers on your store rather than just from the store as a as a single unit uh, well it does still work as a single unit but like every seller has sort of a sub store on on your store so it just does that and doesn't try to do everything under the sun so are there you know the, the with a lot of things there's there's occasion where there's particular plugins that you just don't like or rate but is there any particular thing about using this with maybe some other focus plugins that do specific things in the marketplace area or instead of are there any benefits compared to going to something like multi vendor x that's more of a framework that's doing a multitude of different things so generally I wouldn't recommend Yeats to someone unless they know for sure that what Yeats offers is what they need. And, oh, yeah. uh, and they, they don't need anything beyond that. But generally, for most cases, when people build multi-vendor marketplaces, they're going to need things that the other frameworks do offer. I'm not uh, saying it is like a, a, no. a completely bad solution. It just wouldn't be my first choice unless I know for sure that this is like just the right fit. It wouldn't be my my general first choice or second choice. Oh yeah. So let's go to our conclusion. So are there any areas that you would like to point out and discuss that you think I we haven't covered in the main part? Because this is a kind of introduction 101 episode where we're trying to give some guidance and light of the leading solutions and some of the main things you've got to consider before you go down this road but are there any things that you think that we haven't discussed that really people need to know before they go down this journey so uh, i'd now uh, go on going the opposite direction of how i started how i started was more like may have sounded a bit more discouraging now i'm gonna be all encouragement <laughs> So ending on a good note. And so like, if you want to do it, by all means, go for it. But if you haven't worked with, with such tech stacks in the past, uh, from day one, from day one, involve a tech person, involve someone as a consultant on board. I'm not just saying this because I sell these services. Don't hire me, hire another expert if you want. But hey, if you want to hire me, hire me, feel free. But, but. Make sure that you have an expert on board who knows uh, the business aspect of things and who knows the tech aspect of things. If you just have someone who's expert at tech and they're just going to build you whatever you tell them to build while not understanding your business needs, while not understanding how they're going to make the tech practically translate to your target audience, uh, that's, that's just a developer. That's like uh not someone you bring on board as a consultant to help you make b make tech decisions so have someone with you to make tech decisions while understanding your business requirements that is the most important thing that can be the difference between uh a success and failure and uh secondly don't let the choice of tech overwhelm you leave that to the professionals to choose the right tech for you you focus on the business side you focus on uh First and foremost, establishing yourself as an authority in the industry so that others would buy from you and then bringing on board other influencers, other people with voices or other people with talent to then build and uh, upload products, services, um, courses, solutions on your multi-vendor store so that others can then uh, buy from them. And the last but not the least, user experience, because often even if let's say you are tech savvy, but your other sellers that you, who, whom you want to onboard on your platforms to sell on your platform, they might not be that, that tech savvy. So you need to make sure that your platform provides them with a great user experience to upload, to manage uh, their products and to see their sales statistics, to uh, promote their store and everything. So these are the things that make a huge, huge difference. That's fantastic. I think that's a good time for us to end this episode like i say you can either approach wp tonic or you can approach haroon we work together but um so haroon what's the best way for people to find out more about you or if they want to consult with you on an individual basis they can reach out to me on my website hq raja 
This is from Harun Q Raja, hqraja.com. Over there, they can find uh, the contact form. They can reach out to me from there. And they can also find me on uh, social networks as HQ Raja. And if you want a consultation with WP Tonic, you just go to the WP Tonic and you can book a, a free consultation with me and we can work together. And if it's something complicated or large, you'll probably be working with us and Haroon as well. Uh, um, we will be back next week with some insight on your membership journey in some form or another that hopefully will you will find helpful and will encourage you to do this in 2024 because you're missing a great opportunity if you don't start something in the e-learning area it's a great business model and there are great opportunities there if you've got the right hosting the right support the right knowledge. We will be back next week, folks. Bye.